Hi, welcome to the Abrique workshop. Today I'm going to show you the process that was used to create a boat plaque. So here's a picture of my new used boat. It's a 1999 Hydrosport. And what I thought I would do is I would put a, a plaque in this area right here with the name of the boat, which is First Rodeo. Now this plaque is going to be my original design. And right now I don't know what it's going to look like at all. I do know that it will have the name of the boat, First Rodeo. And because uh, Rodeo is in the name, that of course the plaque will have some sort of a Rodeo theme. So at this point, that's all I have to go on. Now, what I would typically do is go onto the internet and what I've typed here is Rodeo STL 3D and hit done a search on it and I, I selected the um, you know image option in uh, Google so what this will do is obviously bring up 3d images related to rodeo and if you're not familiar with STL files um, I'll, I can try and explain it to you right now STL stands for stereo lithography it's basically a, a 3d file that can be used to create real-world objects from a digital representation. So, for example, a 3D printer would use an STL file to create an object. Also, a CNC router, which is what we have, would do the same thing. So, back to the search here. After I hit enter, and for these search terms, it brings up all these files and I can start looking through them and decide which one that I want and whether or not we would be able to use it with the software that we have. So this one here that I'm looking at, it says 3D STL models. Perfect, I think we could use this one. So now it's just a question of which one you, know, you want to use and do you like it? So here it's on $9.60 for this one here and I could probably import this into my software and manipulate this image because I still have some abilities to do that with STL files and perhaps get rid of the word rodeo here and you know maybe put first rodeo down in this area here and that and that could be my plaque and um, there's nothing wrong with that except I don't, I don't like the image of the bull here rodeo to me means horses and steers and roping and so forth so that that's kind of the um, idea that I would like to capture in the plaque so we can keep looking you know here's here's a good image I kinda like this one I don't I'm not really crazy about the tail there it just doesn't look right this one doesn't seem the quality of it's all that high you know, it's the, the hand look, he looks like he's got a broken wrist there and it's kind of flat over here. And um, if I'm going to spend some time on, on doing this, I'd, I'd like to get something that I'm going to be satisfied with. You can just keep looking through the different files and, and see if you can come up with something that you like. So if you haven't already figured it out, I've already done the design in Aspire and I'm, I'm just trying to recreate the process that I did go through in order to come to that design. Now we can continue to look through here. It's interesting that to me that you know during this process of trying to explain it to you I came across this image here which I think is better than the one that I eventually wound up with. Now one of the problems with this might be uh, the fact that a CNC router can only do 2.5D instead of 3D images. And the, the difference is that you can't do overhangs with 2.5D. And sometimes it's, it's an issue and sometimes it's not. And what that would mean for this one here is that you would, you could see, you would see the leg like this here, but below that, the router can't reach into it. So there would be all wood below that that hasn't been removed. Now, if you do a 3D print of this, that would not happen because a um, 3D printer actually does 3D, whereas a, a, a router, a CNC router, only does 2.5D. I came across this one right here. Okay, so I brought this into Aspire, and 
I thought that this was going to work pretty well. I kind of like this image. Now the, the problem is that when you're working with a, a router, you, you're limited by the depth of travel of the, the tool. You know, it, it can go in a vertical distance, you know, like five inches or so. And you're also kind of limited by the, the, length, the, the length of the router tool itself. So, you know, something that has a lot of depth to it can be, you know, difficult to do. You could do something like this, but then you'd have to really build up the thickness of the model. You know, it might be three or four inches. And, you know, that's not really what I picture as my plaque being on my boat like that. So I figured, you know, one inch tops. So, you know, there's different things that you can do in Aspire. You can kind of flatten images. They, they still, you, know, you don't even know that they're flattened. And, uh, you know, they still look pretty good, in, you know, to stay within that, that inch um, that you have to work with. But I brought this into the software and I, and I played around with it and I just couldn't get it to work. And the problem is the length from the, the tip of this, I don't even know what it is he's holding, uh, to the other end here. It, it's really big. And what I, I eventually tried to do is I rotated the thing around to have this arm going into the page. You know, into it would have been into the wood surface, and then you would have seen the other side because it's a it's a 3D model, and the person would have been like facing away from you, and you know it just didn't seem to work all that well. So at that point there, I decided I'll go for the gold and I'll go to the uh, design and make website. Now these. Um, models are uh, specifically made I believe for Aspire and they're all high quality and you can there's a big price range that you can pay for different models here you know I, I think free is best always so I always try and find something and I spent you know some time on the internet trying to locate you know an, an STL file that I could download but I was also curious as to what they had here and maybe they would have something that I would um, I could use. So anyhow, so I came here and I looked through all these models, and you know some of these are pretty good, and, and I really considered them. And the one I wound up on um, picking is this one right here, and I I think this is really a, a great design. I mean, it shows, you know, the horse is is at a, at a crazy angle. You can see he's really struggling. And the cowboy looks like he's he's about to fall off, but he's he's kind of still being cool about it. And you know, I, I I really like it. So this is the image that I decided to use. Here, what I'm going to do is just kind of go through the components of the design and how you bring it in, and you know, just kind of give you a feel as to to how you would use the software in, in order to um, create this plaque. So the first thing you need to do is to go into the clip art and you know they got all sorts of stuff in here and um, you know you can spend a lot of time just going through this portion of it but the first thing that you want to do is to get the plaque. This is just a, uh, a, a, flat, a flat disc that has a rounded edge around it and all, all you got to do is just drag it into the uh, program and um, so here's the 2D view up in the upper left hand corner and here's the 3D view. I dragged in the component and I'm looking down here it's 5.5 inches. Well I already know that this needs to be 7 inches so I'm going to go over here to the drawing portion and I can change that. So I just punch in 7 and apply. And there you go. There it is. We, so we have a seven inch uh, plaque. Now I need to go back to the clip art and I need to find the barbed wire. And here you go right here. So I can bring this in. And um, my idea was to, um, like I said, have this around the peripheral of the uh, disc. And it's a little small right now. Uh, I, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this to go right into the center. So I go to the drawing tab, <coughs> excuse me, and then the alignment tools. And when I click that, it brings it right into the center of the workpiece. So I click there, select it, and then it gives me the option of enlarging it. So I'll, I'll just take a guess 
as to where I think it should go. So that looks pretty good. So what I need to do is to import the STL file into this program. So model, uh, import component 3D model, uh, bang, there's the Rodeo STL file that we just looked, looked at, and open. It gives you this view here, and that little rectangle below is the work piece that you know we already created when we started this program. So that work piece is 11 inches square. And looking at this, you can see that it's, it's a lot bigger than 11 inches. And you can come over here and, you know, this, the scale here is inches. And, you know, this, the wide dimension is 144 inches. So obviously this is things way too big. What I'll do is I'll just select this and I'll, I'll just put in 10.5. So all we need to do at this point is to get this in the ballpark of what the work piece is. And we can adjust it later, you know, to, to fit better and, and to be at a better size. We've already reduced it and it's, it's made it smaller and, um, you know, we're a lot closer to where we, we need to be. And, you know, down here it has, you know, Z plane position. Again, I'm not real sure on, you know, how to set these things. Again, I've had difficulty understanding how you're supposed to do that. But the one thing I do know is that once I start manipulating all these pieces, I'm going to get an end view that shows me what it's going to look like when it's cut out. So maybe I don't have the best understanding of how to position things now, but I do I am able to preview what a close approximation of what the end result will be in this software. So if I can get something that I like, then I've, I've accomplished my goal. So at this point here, I just know that if I click uh, send a model, that's helpful. And uh, I'm just going to click OK. So now uh, we're back to this preview here, and that's the 3D preview. We can see that it's still too big, which is, which is fine. Um, so we'll go back to the, to the 2D preview, and now I can just select the model. And I'm just going to reduce it in size to get it closer you know, to a size that I want so that it'll fit on the plaque. And I can use this centering uh, tool to kind of help me out, and that kind of looks good enough for right now because I still have to in, add in the last uh, component. And looking at this right now, it seems like the disc is a little too fat. I don't like the bulb wire coming up this much. And the, the horse here, it, it's really kind of recessed into the model. And you know, you, this is undesirable. What I'm gonna do now is try and fix that stuff. So again, you should work from the bottom. So I'm looking at the component levels over here. I'm gonna double click here. And I look at this and it says shape height. Now this is the shape height of the disc, 0.36. I, I think 0.25 would look good. And so now I can go to the bulb wire. And you know, this is 0.89. I can just use the slider here. So I'm going to slide that over to see how that affects the um, height of the bulb wire. You just put it where you like it. Uh, maybe bring it back up a little bit. I think I'm going to put it back to point 0.1. So, you know, you can punch things in here directly. And that's point, a little bit too big. So I'm going to go point 0.075. Okay. And that looks good to me. The last thing is the cowboy. So... You know, right now you can see that this thing is down inside of the model, and we don't want that. So I'm going to adjust the base height up is my first move and see what happens. Okay, so that jumped up, and um, the thing I don't like about it is, you know, that this is, this is part of that extrusion coming up, and this is kind of flat. I'd prefer it to be, you know, look like rounded coming out of the... Um, the disc. So I'm going to bring this back down a little bit. I'll put it to point 0.1 and that's a little bit better. And now the the again this image image is kind of flat. I would like to get this up higher. You know, let, let, let's go 0.25. See what happens here. That's okay. And that that's even more. And um, I, I think that looks pretty good. So again, um, this is a, an approximation. Uh, we're going to go into to look at the tool pass which it'll give an even better approximation of what this will look like when it's cut out. 
but th this is like the idealized version right here. And now we need to add the text into it. It's fairly straightforward. You just go to your drawing tab, text, and uh, right here is where it's going to start typing. And I'm going to put in the name of the boat, uh, first rodeo. And then you can come down here, and it's a similar thing. You know, you can select select it, and then you got to start manipulating things. You can select it, and then you need to start. You can start manipulating things to get it to to work. And you know, for me, that text is a little small compared to the size of the plaque. So I'm going to make this smaller, and maybe I can cheat out a little bit on the uh, barbed wire here. And I'm going to have to recenter that. And um, maybe I can move this over. And there you go. That was the process that I used to create the model. And what you need to do is to start using the tool path to create the tool pass, which is right over here, which is kind of like the second step that you do when you're using this software. And, you know, what I've done here is I've selected you know, the different tools that I'll use uh, to create it. And they start from the top. Um, the 3D roughing tool will cut it out for the, um, you know, for the, it, it, it'll take into consideration the shape of the, um, the, the 3D model and it'll remove a lot of the material um, quickly. And then it'll come in with the 3D finishing tool and it'll, um, you know, do a more finer uh, carve, which will give you the detail that you would want in something like this. The V carve, you can see where it's, it highlights it. That's for the text. And then the profile is to cut it out. So, um, <clears throat> again, they have a, um, a, a tool here that will preview the tool path. And I already ran that, so it gave the final view. But usually what you do is you, it starts out here, which is showing the 11 by 11 inch raw stock that you know, we decided on when we first um, opened the file. And you know, what you usually do is you hit re reset preview, which will bring it back to zero. And then you can you could just walk through it one at a time. It might might be the uh, most informative way. So I just started uh, 3D roughing, and it says preview selected toolpath. So I click on that, and it'll run. And you can see here where it's just removed, you know, the material that it can without running into the 3D model. And the 3D model is all the components that are um, you know make up this um, image that you're seeing in front. So then we can go to the, the second one, and I'll click on uh, Preview, Select the Toolpath. And now this is the, the real fine one that has carved in here and, um, you know, re reveals, um, you know, what is essentially going to be the, like the final product, the, the, you know, the, the final quality of it. And these, you know, you can control how uh, well and how fine you want to carve this. The trade-off is uh, time. You know, uh, we'll, we're going to look and see how long this is going to take, an estimate given by the software. But there, it takes a, a good amount of time. Uh, so moving on to the next tool path, so VCOV. So I'm going to preview that one. And that cut in the text here. And you'll, <coughs> excuse me, you'll notice that it's a little bit, you know, um, You'll notice that the text is a little bit not like cut in deep enough into the uh, wood here in this um, preview. <coughs> and so you can see here that this text is not cutting in deep enough into the uh, wood. And again, you know, once we pick the sizes and have the, um, you know, the exact specs for this uh, raw stock, then um, we'll come back and, um, you know, we can adjust that so it can cut in, into here. It's also not a bad idea to, you know, sometimes cut it uh, a little bit less. You know, if you go too deep, you can't do anything about it. And the, the text is being carved after all this is done. So you've already invested a, amount of, a certain amount of time in there, and if you carve this in too deep, then um, it, it, it sometimes it just really looks terrible. 
but the thing about the router is that you can set it to be too shallow or what you think is going to be too shallow and then you run it and if you find out hey you know I, I need to cut that deeper it's not a problem because you can you know very quickly edit this and create another tool path and add it into the machine and, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to hopefully I'll show you that when we show how this is cut out so um, so there's the text and then the last um, tool path is going to cut this out so I'm going to hit I selected that and preview tool path so now the tool you know it, it's just a, um, uh, an end bit has gone along it's carved out this whole thing except for these little little pieces in here and the reason that these are in here is that if you didn't put them in um, at some point during the, um, the, the, you know, at some point when this is being cut out, it could become loose and that router bit will not stop. So if this piece jumps around, that uh, router will just cut right into your, your work piece and totally destroy it in about a half a second. So um, you don't want this thing moving around when the, the router is going, you know, around here. So you put in these pieces here and it'll cause this to stay in place. And then once it's done, you just cut these out and uh, sand it off. And this is just wood, so um, you know, it's, it's really not a big deal. So at this point here, what I think I'll do is go in the, um, into the workshop, find the stock that I want I'll come back and, and adjust this file and uh, then um, I'll, I'll show you how the, the tool paths are exported and um, then we'll, we'll, I'll show you how, how this is cut out onto the uh, router. All right, so we measured the workpiece and we determined it's three quarters of an inch. So we want to input that data into this uh, file right now. So you come up here, put in um, 0.75, click OK. It's going to tell you it needs to recalculate. Ooh, didn't do that. All right, so it needs to recalculate the tool pass. The tool cutting depth will exceed the material thickness of 0.75 inches. Profile 1 cuts to a depth of 1 inch. And that is true because at first I set it up to be 1 inch. So we'll go in here and change this to um, 0.75 because that's the um, tool path that cuts out around the outside. And I'm going to look at the V carve. So I well, let's, let's, let's look at the thickness of this disc here, because what we need to do is to um, know the height of this surface right here. And uh, once we know that, then we can tell where the VCOV can cut out the text on this. So we need to know the height of this. And I'm, I'm not sure by changing the thickness how it's going to change all the other model thicknesses. So I'm going to go back to the modeling area here and I'm not wow I've added all these other things in here I'm not sure why but in any event let's look at the flat round circle and that says right now that it has a height of 0.375 inches and that sounds okay to me so let's go back over here and we're going to look at the VCOV. Um, so it's going to have a height of 0.375. So this is going to start out at 0.75 minus 0.375 e equals 0.375. So 0.375. So I've just set that to start cutting at 0.375. 
and I'm going to set the, um, the depth that it can go uh, maximum is 0.375. So what that will do is it will prevent it from cutting through the material. It will actually give you a warning if, if that's what's going to happen. So, um, so I'll come back here, I'll reset, and then preview all tool paths and see what happens. Okay, so that looks okay. I don't see any problems with that. This looks like it might be cut a little bit deep, but I actually don't mind that. So I'm going to say that this is good. So just to give you an idea as to what's happening here, the design is all done. And what I need to do is to export the tool paths that are going to be used. And these are the tool paths down here. And the way you can think of this as um, each one of these tool paths has a different bit. And each bit is, you know, used to perform a different function. And it's selected on, you know, um, you know, um, you know, your opinion as to which, what is going to work better or your preference or whatever. So uh, let's, let's look at the first one here. So um, I can double click on this and we could change the settings in here if we wanted to. And this is the uh, 3D roughing um, machine uh, tool path. And this is the tool, tool bit that I've selected to do it. And this is, this is a monster. It's a, a half inch diameter. You know, it's about as thick as your thumb. And it's going to move at 120 in inches per minute. And uh, the step over is going to be 13%. And this is basically just going to tear through that material. And it's going to remove as much material as it can and not come too close to the 3D model. So I'm going to close that. Then you have the 3D finish um, tool path, which is going to be the one that does the fine carving here to, to really bring out the, um, the detail. So looking at this one, uh, it's not a very good picture of it, but the um, actual tip radius of this, which is way down here, is 0 0.0625 inches. So in other words, it's going to carve a very fine, um, you know, high resolution image in, into this um, material. And it's a 10% step over, which you could go lower uh, and it would look better, but I think that's good enough. And th these are the settings. So um, the next one is for the, um, the text here. And this is a V carve. So what a VCOV does is it's, um, let me show you the tool. I think it's got a good pic picture. Here it is, it, it's a, um, you know, it's a V bit. This is, I think it's a 45 degree angle. I don't see it. Oh, oh it's a 60 degree angle. 60 degree angle here, and it's a very, very fine point. And what that point allows it to do is it'll come in here and it'll be able to carve out these shapes like this and it'll it'll do a really good job and what it does is it starts to come out near the surface so that when um, you're cutting this line right here you're only using the very very end of it so in, in other words you get a very fine and precise cut and it also varies the depth of it, um, it'll, it as it travels across here it'll go deeper and it, it, I think it makes a nice little effect. So um, we, can, we can look at that. Um, I, can, I can run this uh, tool path by its, well, there you go right there. Um, it's already been done. So if you look at this, you can see how the piece, the, the, the real shop, just the tip would come along here and form this shape here. And then as it moves in this direction, it would go and cut down deeper to form this shape, which I think looks pretty good. 
Um, and then you have the profile tool. Let me go back here, I guess. So the profile tool is what cuts this out. And that's just a, an end mill. It, it's, uh, I think it's a quarter of an inch. Um, I guess we can look at it. So it's just flat. The diameter of it is 0.25 inches. And actually that feed rate could go up a little bit higher. We'll put that there. And because I changed that, I got to recalculate this. And then just to make sure everything's okay, we'll come back here, uh, reset that, and then uh, preview all tool paths. And we can take a look at that. Okay, and it looks good. So I think that's going to work. So uh, just to give you an idea, um, when you select all the tool paths and then select the, uh, the timer there, it gives you an idea how long this is going to take. So this is one hour and 20 minutes. Now, if I wanted to, I could go through this and start to try and figure out how to get this to be faster. Or, you know, I could change this tool for something else or, you know, do different things. But um, usually the bulk of the time is in the finish carve, the 3D finish one, and that's 45 minutes. And I'm good with that. I, I, you know, it's an hour and 20 minutes to do this. So I got two of them to do. So I'm going to do one, see how it comes out, and then I'll go on to the second. So what we need to do at this point here is to just export the, the tool pass. Now, if these all use the same tool, we could um, just export them all into one file. We would just select them all. And then we would save, the, save it as one tool path, and we could go plug that into the machine, and we're done. But the problem is these are all different. So what's going to happen is we're going to run uh, this one. Well, we're going to start with the right tool in here in the machine and the router. We're going to run this one. Then when it's done, we're going to stop. We're going to change the tool. And then we're going to run the second one and continue with the whole process. But first, we have to export these um, tool paths. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select, select on this. And um, what we need to do is to save the tool path. So I'm going to click Save Tool Path. And this is saved um, onto the computer here. It's just in the, in the hard drive. And I, I have it labeled Thumb Drive. And you can see here, there's, uh, it says run one period MMG. And these are all prior tool paths. And that's how I you know, tend to, to organize these. So what I'll do is I'll make the first one run one. And I'll save it. And it'll ask me to replace it. And I'll keep going through that process. And when I'm done, what I'm going to do is put a um, a, a thumb drive into my computer and I'm going to copy those files to the thumb drive. And then I'll bring those to the router and um, I'll, I'm going to show you how it gets loaded into the machine. 